Howdy folks, John here from rchelicopterfund.com. Nothing overly exciting tonight. I uh, just thought I'd address uh, several reoccurring questions I've been getting regarding uh, battery packs for the RadioMaster TX16S radios. People wondering what battery pack do I use in mine? What do I recommend? And uh, how long would a battery pack last based on capacity? And how do you calibrate the radio for your battery pack? So seeing that I just did buy a new battery pack for this thing, I thought we'd address all those questions in uh, one short little video. For anyone who has seen my website, uh, Best LiPo Battery Page, I'll fire a link below in the description and up in the little card doodad. If you're curious, I list my favorite LiPos that I've used over the years, and currently Gen's Ace uh, for the bigger packs are definitely my go-tos. Uh, here in Canada, we can get them from RotorQuest for pretty good pricing, and Gen's Ace just make awesome batteries. So it should come as no surprise, that's the uh, battery pack I picked for the uh, Radio Master here. This is their 4000 milliamp hour 2S TX or transmitter pack, and we'll have a look at it, we'll see how it fits, I'll show you the dimensions, and uh, we'll go over calibrating the battery voltage, and then we'll also calculate roughly how long a fully charged 4000 milliamp hour battery will last in this thing going by how much current draw it is. I've always wanted to uh, test that, never have. Tonight's the night. Let's get into the battery. I'll have a few links below in the description to this pack if you wanted to check one out for yourself. Uh, the part number is GEA 4002STXJ. And again, it's a 2S 1P 4000 milliamp hour uh, LiPo pack. If you've got a Spectrum DX9 or DX8 and you're running a lithium pack, you might have one of these in, and these will also fit the uh, Radio Master. Uh, it's got your standard 3-pin JST-XH balance plug, which is what uh, we use on the Radio Master to plug it in. And they also come with this JST-ERH plug uh, for the uh, Spectrums, but uh, we won't be using that at all. As far as dimensions on this little guy, so it's pretty much 51 on the mark wide, lengthwise, looking at about 70, and width, almost 19, 18.7. And we'll see just how tight of a fit it is. If you're curious, up until now in my uh, TX16S's, I've just been using this Align uh, 1900 milliamp hour 2S pack, and I've been getting three, three and a half hours with it, you know, not taking it much lower than 75% to be safe. But uh, yeah, it was getting a little, little too short flight time for what I would like. So as you can see, this just fits. There's a little wiggle room, but not much. But it's a really nice fit. Again, we don't use that at all. And Gen's Ace, they usually pack with some of this foam. You could cut a little piece to put in there if you wanted to, to keep it from moving around even more. The foam on the back of the cover holds it nice and secure as well. So no flopping or moving about in there. So, no big deal, right? So it works. Now, before we do anything, what I always like to do with new packs, I like to check what their cell voltage is out of the box when they're brand new, just to make sure they were charged and kept at a good storage voltage. Never had a problem with Gen's Ace. 3.81, 3.82, so, you know, it's certainly well within the, uh, right around the 50% charge state. So that's good for storage. Now, the next thing I like to do on brand new packs is check their internal resistance. I will write that number on the pack. And then I always have a brand new IR reference number. And I talk about that on my website on the internal resistance page. 
Again, fire link below in the description, up in the card doodad. So let's check the internal resistance on this thing. Hopefully that's showing up. Maybe I should zoom in, eh? There we go. I'm gonna start it. 32 and 31. Just do another one just in case it was off. 32 and 31. So that's good. So what I will do is I will write that on here. IR equals 32 and 31. So we've got our internal resistance. Let's calibrate the radio for the battery voltage. So to do that, uh, it's nice to have a pack that's actually got a separate power plug so you can actually monitor the voltage uh, through the separate plug here. So I'm just going to hook this little plug into that and I'm going to hook my multimeter, put it on voltage. Just get this little guy out. Now whatever you do, make sure you don't short anything. Don't touch that, you. So somehow keep those from touching, very important. So here's the uh, voltage, it's sitting right at 7.6. Now I've got to try to, I'm just gonna put the pack in here. While we turn this around and put it down. So, so watch how much the volt we'll watch how much the voltage drops when we turn this on. Mm, you turn me on. Point zero three of a volt roughly. So to calibrate the voltage for the pack. So we know this is actually what the pack voltage is, seven 0.57 volts. So yeah, you're going to need a digital multimeter. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but uh, just something that you can check the voltage. So we're going to go into system and then we're going to scroll over to the calibration menu. And there's quite a few here. So if you actually go backwards, so roll your wheel uh, counterclockwise, you get into all your battery calibrations here. Now, hopefully that's showing up. Should I zoom in a bit? Actually, I'm gonna turn down the brightness of the screen a bit so it's not too bright. We can still see the meter. So as you can see, this is saying it's 7.55 volts. So it's not off by much, but uh, you know, obviously it was calibrated at the factory. But if we want to be precise here, let's just change it. So you just highlight it and then, of course, dial it up or down. We want to dial it to 7.57. So there. Now that we know that, let's try to determine how long this pack will last uh, going by um, the current draw out of this radio. Battery just finished charging up here and I thought I'd check how it balanced. I haven't actually checked that yet on this Max version. I did on the original Hall version and uh, the internal balancer worked really well. So let's see what we're looking at here. Cell 1, 4.18 volts. Cell 2, 4.18 volts. Perfect. So last thing, we're gonna check the current draw so we can t determine how long this 4,000 milliamp hour battery will power the radio from a fully charged state. So all I've done is I've made this little JST-XH three pin. Um, basically it's an extension cable but I've just got the uh, negative side of it uh, separated so I can hook the uh, multimeter in series between the battery and the radio so we can determine what the current draw is. So I'm just going to plug this little extension cord into the radio master here. And then we're going to hook our meter up. Now 
I don't know how much current this thing is going to draw and whenever you're not certain how much current a device is going to draw when you're hooking your meter up in the uh, amp scale, always pick the highest value if you've got uh, two separate uh, amp values like this meter has. It's got a 400 milliamp input and a 10 amp input. Now I don't know if this radio is going to draw over 400 milliamps. If it did draw much more over 400 milliamps, I would risk blowing the fuse. So I'm going to go into the 10 amp scale just to be safe. And we'll turn this to amps. And then we just hook this in series. Uh, the positive will be on the positive potential side. Doesn't really matter if you hook this up backwards. If you did get it backwards, it would just give a negative current reading, that's all. And the negative up to the negative potential. And we will plug our battery in. So that's how you hook everything up. I'm just going to turn the radio around so we can actually see what's going on here. So we've got everything hooked up correctly. You can see the meter. So we're going to turn on the radio and see how much current it's drawing. So peaked over uh, 400 milliamps uh, a couple of times there, 0 0.250 amps, 250 milliamps, just at rest here. Now I've got the screen turned down and screens use a lot of power. So if we turn the screen right up to full, there it's at 372 milliamps. Turn the volume right up. So there are a few times when she was talking, it went all the way up to 600 milliamps, just peaked over it. So yeah, it's using a fair about bit of power. So let's say that it's going to use 400 milliamps of power. You know, that would be screen right full, volume right full. You're turning your switches. She's talking quite a bit. You know, that's the upper end of what this radio would use. So if uh, we take a 4,000 milliamp hour pack, we do a little bit of calculation here. Let's say to be safe, we're never going to discharge it below a 75% discharge state. 80% would be maximum, but let's go 75 to make the calculation easy. So 75% of 4,000 would be 3,000 milliamp hours. So if there was a 3,000 milliamp load, this battery would be discharged to roughly a 75% discharge state in one hour. But of course, there's not a 3000 milliamp load. It's a 400 milliamp load at maximum. 400 milliamps goes into 3000 milliamp hours, uh, what, seven and a half times. So you're easily going to get seven and a half hours out of this pack. That's how you can estimate how long your battery is going to last in your radio. And you can do that for any radio, not just the uh, radio master here. Just find out what the current draw is and then divide that into the capacity. So that is it. Hopefully it answered a few of those popular questions. And just thought I'd show you one thing that's coming up. We're going to be reviewing a heli here, which I haven't done in a while. The Ishin E180. This is their direct drive 200 size machine, basically direct competition against the OMP Hobby M2. We're going to see what it's all about. That will be in an upcoming video very soon. Thanks for watching, folks. We'll see you next time.